Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and today we'll be talking about how to climb in each tier and escape your elo. Yes, that's right. There's no one answer to the question, how do I win my games? If you sit Faker down and ask him how to play League of Legends, you might get what would be considered the closest to an objectively true response. But if you try to follow that response religiously as an iron player, you're not going to see much of a change in your win rate. There are very two obvious factors at play. For one, you simply don't have the mechanics or game knowledge to do what pros do. Two, neither do your opponents. A lot of in-game decisions, whether that's macro calls or even trying to predict how an enemy may juke, rely heavily on understanding what your opponents are gonna do. So, in this video compiled by some of our best coaches and analysts, we should be able to figure out some key winning strategies for exactly your rank. And of course, this isn't all we have to offer. Have you ever asked yourself after a bad game, what am I missing? Or sought help from impatient friends? Or browsed desperately for answers that only bring up more questions? Your self-doubting days are over with Discovery, the first game-focused AI. Discovery is trained on the world's leading esports athletes to be your everyday personal coach. That's right, Discovery can help you improve your gameplay by giving you tips and strategies to take your game to the next level. Get started at ProGuides.com. All right, we'll be talking about the ranks in order from bottom of the ladder to the top. So of course, we'll be talking about how to win an iron first. To get into the right mindset for figuring out what works in lower elos, we need to analyze the why. To do that, we'll sort of grade some of the broader skill categories in League. For Iron, pretty much everything is as low as you can get. That isn't to say that absolutely everybody gets a zero for the grade in every category, but overall, the mechanics, game knowledge, split second decision making, and just basic grasp over very core concepts here is pretty low. I mean, even stuff outside of the games affects the game a lot here. There's a disproportionate amount of AFKs in Iron. Maybe it's because there are more younger kids that get ganked by the parents IRL to help with the groceries, or maybe it's just because casual players don't mind AFKing two minutes to go grab food mid-game. Or maybe you're just having to take care of your kid. You know, I get it, but not really. Anyway, either way, you don't really see AFKs like this in Diamond. So really, the very first step that you can do in improving your win rate in Iron is actually caring about the games. If you order food, wait for it to get there. If you get ganked IRL, wait till you for sure don't. Once you're in the right mindset about winning games, you really just need to build your foundational skills. Things like CSing as a laner, pathing as a jungler, and actually using wards go a very long way. So many people suck at the very bottom of the ranks are quick to blame their bad luck on their teams. But I promise, it's not always bad luck. Both sides are dealing with the same issues. By getting your basics down, you're putting yourself so much ahead of the rest of the pack. Once you get through your little training arc, you can start to look at what strategies work best in iron. Remember, you're still playing in the lowest ranks, so let's keep it simple and easy to execute. First, you want to pick a champion that is relatively easy to use and execute, both in a mechanical sense and how team-reliant they are. Champs that are really hard to play, like Lee, and those that really need a team to play around them, like Zeri and Aphilios, have quite literally never had winning stats in the lower ranks. There's a reason Juggernauts typically have the highest win rates in iron. Mordekaiser, Mundo, Garen, Champ champions like this do the damage that you need to carry but are tanky enough that you don't really need a team to set you up and you aren't heavily punished for mistakes. Aside from your champ choices, there are some gameplay tips that can help you a ton. For one, I'm not saying to absolutely never group, but you should try to avoid doing it as much as possible and maybe even go in entire games without fighting 5v5s. The reason for that is that, again, everyone here is going to be pretty bad. If your teammates aren't winning the fights correctly, you may basically end up having to win 1v5. It's much easier to stick to split pushing and fighting small skirmishes when you can. It's a lot easier to pick up a slack in 2v2 or 3v3 than a 5v5. On top of tackling our very relying on the unreliable problem, split pushing is just itself a very, very strong tactic in iron. Lack of awareness is something that plagues league players in general, but in iron, it runs rampant. Whether it's the bystander effect or actually not even realizing what's happening, it's very very easy for one team to let someone on the other team push down one, two, or even all three towers in lane. If you're fed, even better. Even if someone does react, if you're strong enough to kill them, there's a pretty good chance that no one comes to help them out. And with the mental fortitude in the lower ranks, or maybe just League of Legends in general being proven to be not so good, they may just leave the game off of it. 
or even start inting. Mental Warfare is a 100% legitimate tool that you can use to boost your odds of winning. Don't be afraid to do a bit of the all chat taunting to push them a bit further. The last big tip I have for you here is just doing all the objectives. Again, we go back to the general lack of awareness. It's really common to see dragons, rift heralds, and barons be up on the map for way too long. Whether you're playing something that can solo it or you just need a teammate to come help out, figure out the best way to take dragons early ASAP. Later on, the same goes for dragons as well as baron. In higher ranks, you almost always see baron get taken after a pick or after one team fight. But in iron, the enemy team is rarely ever going to walk over and check in time. Just drag your team over to him and nuke it down very fast. Low elo games are notoriously hard to close out, so forcing barons can help expedite that process a bit. As we move up to bronze, not a whole lot changes honestly. Iron and bronze are very similar, the players are very tilty, lack awareness, and overall just move without a lot of purpose. The one area I find players have improved the most on this tier compared to iron is their mechanics. So if you want to be able to out the other bronzies, you'll need to surpass them there. Specifically, your laning skills need to be brought up a bit. Instead of just mindlessly trading, actually aim to punish your foe when they move up to CS, all the while working to keep your own CS up. Aside from that, the same general advice from Iron works here. Split pushing, or at least keeping fights limited to 2v2s and 3v3s, is typically the way to go. Picking simple, easy to pull off champions is also still very much recommended. I said players' mechanics are getting better in this tier compared to bronze, and that doesn't mean you're the second coming of Benji. And lastly, forcing objectives under the assumption that enemy team just won't check is a pretty solid tactic. Going from bronze to silver is a bit more of a jump in skill. To me, bronze is more like iron 2.0, just slightly better than iron. But in silver, you see players starting to be quite a bit better. We're still a long way from being atop the ladder, but still. Team fighting is a bit more of a thing here, but you still want to lean more into split pushing and small skirmishes as much as you can. The recommended champ pool is the same as iron and bronze. The easier to play, more consistent your results, the more you can focus on other aspects of gameplay. Like in bronze, the best aspect of your gameplay to focus on here is your individual mechanics. Most games are going to be won and lost off mechanics alone, since it's going to be determining if you can get the lead that you need to force the wins on your own. Alright, now that we're looking at the gold elo, we're in a completely different ballpark. Silver and under will be considered quote unquote low elo, while gold is the start of high elo or mid elo. Those are loose terms, since gold 4 and silver 1 are pretty similar, and there are a lot of things to consider overall, but still, you get the point. We need some type of loosely defined borders to distinguish what's what. Anyway, once you do hit gold, players really level up in all aspects. Concepts like macro, wave management, and things like that are going to be a lot more understood, and the mechanics of most players should be relatively solid. You won't see a Blitzcrank hooking 45 degrees to the left of their targets or any flashing just to miss Tibbers by a mile. So how do you win more in gold? Well this is where things like play styles and preferences actually start to mean something. In silver and under, split pushing was the way to go simply because team fighting isn't always great because of unreliable teammates. But in gold, people have a lot more snap. Picking for the team is a lot more of a thing, and since you can generally rely on people to carry, you can go with the utility or engage pick to facilitate them. Still, with the overall skill level that you see in gold, you want to continue keeping the picks not too hard to use. Alright, now we have plaid. Plaid is right on the border of middle and high elo. As a generalization, I think of plat 4 and 3 as being middle ranks, and plat 2 and 1 being the start of high elo. Elo. Regardless of how we label things, plat is to gold what bronze was to iron earlier. The average plat player is just like the average gold player, but plus one in every aspect. Macro is just a bit better, core concepts are just a bit better, and laning, as you guessed it, is just a bit better. The one thing I do find plat players excel at much more than in gold players is having a better understanding of specific game knowledge. What I mean by that is knowing what items do and when they are good, as well as knowing what most of the champion's abilities do, as well as your cooldowns, and how to play around them. Learning stuff like that is one of the biggest hurdles to overcome in League of Legends, but once you do, you start improving really fast, since the only thing left to do is to work on mechanics. And that's exactly my advice for climbing this rank. Whether that means grinding out games, either normals or ranked, or just spending time in practice tool, the best way to get out of plat is just to really, really work on your mechanics. And once you do, you'll finally wind up in diamond. Now you're definitely in high elo. Here most people's mechanics are pretty impressive, so unless you're already a master plus level player, you're probably not going to just brute force your way out of this tier. At this point, players are so highly graded in both mechanics and the know-how that most champions are playable at a very strong level, with very few exceptions. 
This is where it starts really to get hard to hone your skills to climb. Everyone is just too aware to just get away with QB sneaking dragons and Baron just getting free wins. Honestly, the biggest key to climbing at this point is solid teamwork and communication. We often preach about how you're the sole person responsible for your own LP, so you should always play for yourself. And to a large degree, that is completely true in the low and middle elos. Once you get to diamond, the skill level is just too high to do that. You have to work with your team. Junglers and solo laners need to coordinate invades together. Laners need to call junglers for dives, and you and your teammate need to communicate which enemy carries don't have some so you can target them. Communication also helps a lot with macro. Again, everyone in Diamond is going to have a better grasp on what to do and when to do it. The easiest way to out macro your foes is to coordinate a movement on the map with the rest of your team, lining up pushing in waves, going for resets, TPs, and other plays that you need to secure objectives and push leads. Once you've broken out of Diamond and hit Master Plus, I don't really think that you need a video like this to help you out. At this point, you completely mastered solo queue and we might even ask you to join our coaching staff. <laughs> Just kidding, but not really. Players here have the mechanics to play champions that are usually reserved for pros. Jace, Aphilios, Nidalee, stuff like that. That being said, everyone has something that they can prove on, right? I mean, not everyone in Master Plus is suddenly faker. So, what's the number one thing that you can improve on once you reach the top of the top of the top of the ladder? All of our coaches and allies agree on one thing. There may be a bit of room for improvement on mechanics here, and game knowledge or macros there, but the worst issue by far is mental fortitude. There is an interesting bell curve when it comes to people's mental strength in League of Legends. There's toxicity at all ranks, of course, but you're way more likely to see people raging, soft inting, leaving games, or just straight up running it down at the very bottom and the very top of the ladder. By just focusing up, stopping the tilt, and playing every game to win instead of just giving up at 5 minutes because of one bad play, you're automatically gonna increase your win rate. I can't really say the rest for your teammates, but you know, say la vie. And that wraps things up for how to climb through each rank and escape what you may think is ELO hell. I really hope that you learned something from today's video. For more content like this and to keep up with the meta, make sure you sub and turn on the notification bell. I can't wait to see you guys in the next one, but until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.